Hello everyone and welcome back to the amazing game of Solaris. Last time we made, um, nope, not low game, new game. We made the Little Birdies Oh Awesome. Which we talked about in the previous episode, so if you didn't see that, definitely check it out. Um, in this episode, we are going to be starting the game. We probably won't even begin technically playing it. But I am certainly okay with that. So, I always put this a huge. A thousand stars because I think the more AIs and the more stars there are to explore, the more fun the game. The game becomes more fun. Um, Ring is super easy. Spiral is a bit harder if you don't have wormhole travel, but we do. AI empires, let's, let's do, let's not go crazy here. I did that once and it killed me immediately pretty much. So let me try 22 AI starts. Okay, I should really explain all these before I do anything. So galaxy size is how big your playing field is, galaxy shape. Again, doesn't really matter for us. I'll explain that later. AI empires are the one are the aliens that you either befriend or take over, kind of like in Spore, if you've ever seen any of my series on that. Amazing game, and I would consider Spore better than this, but anyway, advanced AI sorts, that means AIs who know better than you. I would keep that pretty low. Max Fallen Empires, keep that at the max, because they are amazing. Habitable world, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump this up. I'm gonna bump this up, because habitable worlds are amazing. AI, well, hmm. I haven't actually played with this before, so let me just keep down 1.5. AI aggressiveness, normal, normal. Okay, I'm not pro at this, otherwise I'd probably put it on insane, but I won't. Um... FTL method, any, that's okay. So that means other people, other AIs get to have their own FTL method, which makes the game more fun. Clusters, random. I would keep that random, that way they're not, like, all together. Advanced neighbors, off. You don't want that. You definitely want in-game crises. They are amazing. Iron Man mode, I don't know what that is, so I'll just keep it off, and let's play. So, here we are, in the eon since the first primitive birdie communities took shape in the dense jungles of Nest, our civilization has spread and prospered. Great achievements were made, both in the advancement of science and on the spiritual plane, as we sought to expand our understanding of the universe and the role we play in it. A council of our most learned priests was convened to advise our elected leaders a tradition that continues until this day. Now, at, after the successful creation of the artificial subspace wormholes, the finest minds of the Little Birdies O Awesome have finished construction of the first wormhole station at the edge of our system. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Let us begin. So, I'll just keep this on pause for probably the rest of the episode. So, basically, we're awesome, we unite together, and we have insane wormhole technology. You start off with your station and some ships. Um, yeah, I'll do the planet first. So, here's your main planet summary screen. So, this is where you'll be looking for if you have tons of planets. This is just the basic preface of what the planet does. So these are all the, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Yeah. These are all the counts for, oh, these are planet resources. Okay, so that's irrelevant. You want to look at this, so resource output. So 12 energy credits. As I may or may not have said, energy credits are basically money. Minerals are, well, minerals. They construct things. Influence is super nice to have. 
you'll probably learn along the way what that is. Um, this is just for research. This is how many tiles you have, which as you can see here, are your tiles. You start out with a pretty beaten up world, you just have an industrial wasteland, a few slums, and actually this is not a bad setup as far as minerals and food go. Then armies, you don't have to worry about them for a long time, well at least until you get into a war. Um, you can leave that as defaults. Yeah, that's actually a lot of armies for your starting place. This is where you build your fleets, which let me just go ahead to that. So this is your ship designer. This is where you design all of your stuff, which currently we haven't unlocked any better stuff, so that'll be useless to us. Expansion Planner is when you want to colonize another planet. That's super useful to look at. Traditions, we will look at later. I'm sorry, I'm just buzzing through all these. Leaders are super useful. They basically add awesome stuff to your fleets, to your planets if they're governors. Species, you don't have to worry about this for now because that's when you get genetic modification. Genetic modification, as it is in real life, is amazing. It's even more amazing in Stellaris, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Strategic resources, strategic resources, can I talk today, are things that will cover later factions, spring up, and they basically help you or hurt you. This, These are our policies, war philosophy, unrestricted wars. If you can, keep it there because that means you can do any kind of war you want. Food stockpiling, keep that balance, yeah, because when your food is stockpiled to the max, then your population, your new population grows quicker. Um, everyone needs food to survive and not starve, because when your population starves, they get really angry and they really hate your guts, which you do not want. You want all of your guys happy or at least content. So here is showing, you know, sectors and all that. You don't have to worry about sectors until you get lots and lots of empires, colonies, all that kind of stuff. So this is our galaxy. Currently it's all gray because we haven't explored it. And we have no idea who else is in the universe, if anyone. Hint, there are other people in this universe. In this galaxy, even. So, let's zoom back in on our particular solar system. So, we have your face. We also have our planet here. And we have no idea what these are. So, let's click Survey System. That way, our science ship can go ahead and survey for us and see what potential goodies these have in store. What else should I show you? Yes, research. Arguably the most important part of this entire game. So, oops, I kind of went through that. But anyway, when you have research, it shows you the options that you have. You can expand this with more technology. But for now, let's just look at this. So, here we can see if you mouse outside of the little description thing here, it has a nice little blurb on describing what the technology is. But this is what you really want to look at. You want to look at what it gives you. So, planet food plus three. We don't really need that yet because, as you can see, we have plenty of food sources. We have plenty of food. Three extra food. That's fine for right now. So, let's check out our other ones. Planetary Unification, you get better influence, and you get an edict. I don't think I showed this to you guys earlier. Oh, yeah. Policies. Edicts. Edicts are things that you can temporarily enforce to normally to speed things up or to get temporary things to go your way. In this case, I just keep this on because ethics, they might change, but you really want that research speed as high as you can. 
So this is a bio lab that's for science, and we don't really need that now, so let's do planetary unification. Ooh, minerals. Number one thing in this game, at least in my opinion, are minerals. These things right here. You want to prioritize your minerals because minerals allow you to build things to get your other stuff. Basically, your other resources. So, right now, let's, um, clear out this slum, because, as you can tell, we can't build there. Um, see, here you can build, but this is a tile blocker, so we can't build anything on there yet. So, let's clear that way, and this is measured in days. I will come to that later. But, let's see here, is there anything else I've gotten? Yes. Victory. If you go over to your situation log, you can always tell how to win the game. And yes, you can win the game, it just takes a long time. As you can see here, um, Federation victory, conquest victory. Basically, take over everyone, colonize everything, or colonize everything with other friends. Minor mandate means that there are certain mandates that your ruler has set up to ensure his or her um, campaign promises are kept. And it's your job to either go with that and he or she will give you extra influence for that as a reward or you can completely ignore it like I do most commonly. The budget tab, I don't really see the usefulness of this. This just shows how many energy credits you have, which income and expenses you can see just by hovering over that, as you can with all the other ones. Here we can see our population. Currently, the slice of the pie is all the Bodhi population because no one else is living within our borders. So that's about it for that, and then contacts will eventually show all of the different empires that we will come across. But that's about it for this episode. I will hit the play button here in the next episode and show you guys how to start off your first year or so in space. Until then, goodbye, thank you for watching.